So you go to bed on time, you get a good night's sleep, you wake up in the morning and you still feel like shit. If you're watching this video, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's this feeling of waking up and realizing that you are operating on only 5% battery. It's the brain fog that makes you forget your own phone number. It's the heavy lead-like feeling in your legs that makes a flight of stairs feel like climbing Mount Everest. For a long time, that was my life. So I had thyroid issues, I was trapped in a cycle of Hashimoto's flare and I also had something called uh, chronic uh, fatigue which was caused by EBV, Epstein-Barr virus. Now this Epstein-Barr virus sounds very scary but actually this is a virus that pretty much all of us are infected by EBV at some point of time in our life. So pretty much everybody, all grown-ups have this virus in their system but more often than not it's a benign virus and you don't have any symptoms. Like like it doesn't really affect the quality of your life but sometimes unfortunately this can create problems now full disclosure guys i'm not a doctor i'm just sharing my own personal story because i feel that uh, this is something a lot of people struggle with and if i can help even one person who is watching this video i think my job will be done so i want to talk about the one thing that finally broke this uh, vicious cycle for me. It's a choice that I made about five years ago that many people including some doctors find controversial. So for the last five years I have been taking 10,000 international units of vitamin D3 supplement every morning. In this video I am going to break down exactly why I do it, the science of how it fights Hashimoto's and the EBV and most importantly the safety steps I take to make sure that it helps me rather than hurt my health. Before we talk about the supplement, we have to talk about the invisible monsters. Most people think of Hashimoto's as just a thyroid problem. They think that uh, you take a pill, your TSH looks good and you are fine. But Hashimoto's isn't a thyroid disease. It's an immune system disease. Your body is literally in state of civil war attacking its own tissues. And if you add Epstein-Barr virus infection on top of it, then that is a really bad uh, mixture. Most people think of Epstein-Barr virus, EBV, as just mono that you get in high school. But for many of us, that virus never really leaves. It stays dormant in your B cells, waiting for a moment of stress or inflammation to reactivate it. In my case, COVID was the factor that reactivated my EBV infection. So after I got COVID in 2020 summer, that's when uh, you know I started having chronic fatigue and all all these problems that uh, you know I I was encountering. When EBV reactivates, it's like a silent parasite. It drains your cellular energy. It hijacks your mitochondria. When you have both both Hashimoto's and EBV, it's a double whammy. Your immune system is overactive and it's attacking you while your cellular energy is being siphoned off by the virus. For years, I stayed in the normal range. My doctor told me uh, my vitamin D was fine. It was at around 25-30 nanograms per milliliter, but I did not feel fine. I felt like I was uh, disappearing. I was always exhausted. So I started asking, is normal enough for uh, someone fighting two chronic conditions or do I need to be optimal when it comes to my vitamin D? serum level in my blood. Now first let's clear something. Vitamin D is not actually a vitamin. It's a pro-hormone. It's the master architect of your immune system. If your immune system is an army, vitamin D is the general. In Hashimoto's, your army has lost its mind. It's attacking the wrong people. Vitamin D helps create something called T regulatory cells. Think of these as the diplomats or the peacekeepers. They are the cells that tell your immune system, hey, stop attacking the thyroid gland. That's a friend. Without enough vitamin D, you don't have enough peacekeepers, the war just keeps going on and you feel miserable. Now let's talk about the virus EBV. So vitamin D is one of the most powerful natural antivirals on the planet. It triggers the production of something called cathelicidins which are like natural antibiotics and antivirals produced inside your body. 
Research has shown that people with high levels of vitamin D have lower EBV viral loads. So by taking supplements, I have been able to keep my vitamin D levels high and essentially I'm taking the fuel away from the virus. I'm making my body very uncomfortable place for the EBV virus to survive. But here is the kicker. People with autoimmune issues often have a genetic mutation in their vitamin D receptors. This means even if you have a little vitamin D in your blood, your cells cannot grab it effectively. So for such folks, you don't just need a normal amount. You need enough to overcome that resistance. And for me, that is 10,000 international units of vitamin D supplement. Now, I know some of you are thinking, 10,000 I use. The RDA says 600 I use. So 10,000 sounds like a crazy high dosage. So let's take a look at the math. If you stand outside in the summer sun in a bathing suit for 20 minutes, your body will naturally produce anywhere from 10,000 to 20,000 international units of vitamin D. Now, one important thing to note is that our ancestors, they lived outside, but we are living inside in boxes. We are chronically indoors and those of us with chronic illness, we are even more, you know, depleted with vitamin D. I didn't just pick this 10,000 number out of my ass. I used biochemical testing. When I took 2000 international units, my blood level stayed at around 32. When I bumped my dosage to around 5000 international units, I moved to about 45 nanogram per milliliter of vitamin D serum level in my blood. It wasn't until I hit 10,000 international units that my blood levels reached the 70 to 90 nanograms per milliliter range. That 70 to 90 range is the sweet spot for many people with autoimmunity. That is where the brain fog starts to clear. That is where I stopped feeling like an iPhone running on 5% battery. But I have to be very clear. You cannot just take vitamin D3 supplements without its partners in crime. If you take high dosage of vitamin D alone, you can actually cause problems. So you need these cofactors. So if you are planning to take high dosage of vitamin D, please listen carefully. This is one of the most important part of uh, this video. Vitamin D increases your absorption of calcium. But vitamin D does not know where that calcium should go. Without help, the calcium can end up in your arteries or your kidneys and this can cause kidney stones or hardening of uh, your arteries and that can cause cardiovascular problems. And that is why I never take vitamin D3 supplements without vitamin K2, specifically MK7. Think of vitamin D as the loader that puts calcium into your blood and vitamin K2 as the traffic controller that moves that calcium into your bones and your teeth where it belongs. So I regularly take 200 micrograms of K2 in the form of MK7. The second partner of vitamin D3 is magnesium. So your body cannot convert vitamin D into its active form without magnesium. If you are low on magnesium and you take a high dosage of vitamin D3, you will drain your magnesium stores even further. This can also cause constipation. And in fact, this is one of the common side effects of taking high dosage of vitamin D3. Folks start taking vitamin D3 supplements and then they suddenly wonder why, uh, why is my bowel movement not regular? And I used to have regular bowel movements and now I'm having trouble. Well, it's because vitamin D3, high dosage of vitamin D3 is depleting your magnesium. So always make sure that you take uh, magnesium supplements with uh, vitamin D3. And if you have ever taken vitamin D3 and felt anxious, or had heart palpitations, that's often a magnesium deficiency that uh, is uh, triggering these uh, conditions. So I personally take 400 milligrams of magnesium glycinate every night. It keeps my system balanced, it helps my sleep and it makes my vitamin D work for me. And I have been doing this for five years now, ever since I got uh, COVID and time flies by. It feels like it was yesterday, but it has been five years. My Hashimoto antibodies are at all time low now and my EBV has stayed dormant. I haven't had a crash that lasted more than a day in over three years. But I don't fly blind. I get my blood tested every six months. I check my vitamin D25 hydroxy levels and I check my calcium levels. So if you are struggling with that soul crushing fatigue, don't just accept it as the normal. Dig deeper. Look at your vitamin D levels. Look at your cofactors. Talk to a functional med practitioner who understands that optimal is different for everyone. All of us are different. You know, there is no one size fits all. 
for me personally this protocol has changed my life it gave me my brain back it gave me my career back i work in a very competitive uh, tech industry and uh, if i have Uh, chronic fatigue and uh, you know if my brain is not sharp i will not be able to survive in this industry so i'm very glad that i was able to fix my issues and the only reason i'm making this video is because i'm hoping that by sharing all this with you guys you may find your way back uh, you know to your best self if you are having these problems and like i said before i'm not a doctor i'm just a regular guy who is sharing my health journey and i'm hoping that you find it useful now if you are interested in learning more details more technical details about what i talked about then you can check out my vitamin d course it's listed in the video description below and thanks for watching this video please like and subscribe and next why don't you guys click over here and watch this video and i will see you guys over there bye